All right. On to uh, Lady Guns first and inaugural uh, virtual Lady Guns night. Uh, a bunch of uh, ladies were registered for some shooting events, and because of COVID restrictions, we uh, we weren't able to do that. And so, uh, because we don't want to wait long uh, too long to uh, be with our Lady Guns tribe, we thought we would give this a go and see what happens. So, uh, a little bit about us, if you don't know who we are. My name is Deneen. I'm the founder of Lady Guns, and uh, Lady Guns started out uh, in my realm of shotgunning and competitive sporting clays, and has evolved into all things shooting and outdoor adventure. And uh, my partner in crime is Casey Gavinchuk. Casey, give us a wave up there. Um, and uh, uh, Casey and I go back almost 10 years where we started shooting together. We took our instructor courses together. We enjoy competing against each other. Uh, we took our black badge together uh, and on and on. So we decided we wanted to build a community of women that love shooting and, uh, and uh, see what happens as this community grows. So uh, that, is, that is us and that is uh, Lady Guns. And so uh, what I'm hoping we can do tonight is, uh, is just get to know each other a little bit better, share all those things about shooting and the shooting sports that, uh, that we love. So tonight uh, we have a special guest, our first ever special guest, Amanda Fisher. And uh, so what we're gonna do, Amanda, is we're gonna put you on the hot seat tonight. And uh, that's what makes you special. And uh, uh, so the, the first thing I'm gonna ask you to do is please introduce yourself to all these lady gunners uh, in the crowd and tell us uh, uh, how you got into shooting. And I just found out before we went live <laughs> that you actually weren't all that into guns. So I can't wait to hear how you got into shooting. Uh, so, hey, everybody. I'm Amanda Fisher. Um, I am an IPSC competitive shooter. Um, I've been shooting for um, five years. Uh, well, I've been shooting for a little bit longer than five years, but I wasn't um, uber keen on firearms. So um, where I grew up, I grew up in a city, and so firearms weren't really introduced to me um, as a young child. Um, so, um, I was kind of against firearms. Firearms weren't, or not, I didn't realize were used for sporting, um, purposes. So, um, I was one of those people that thought that they were bad and I didn't want them in my home. Um, my, um, my boyfriend wanted to hunt and I'm like, no, 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 you can't hunt because you can't have a gun in my home. And then Finally, I let him get a hunting rifle. And then um, I have a friend that I work with, um, Dave is actually his name, and he, he took me out to shoot my first pistol in 2015. Um, and so from that point, um, I felt super empowered and I felt like, 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 wow, like, look at this thing. It's like an extension to my arm and it's, it's amazing. It's powerful. It's, it's, and it was just a 32, like it was a little pro hip, a little Mauser that it was just obviously no recoil or anything, but I still felt so empowered by it. Um, and so that is actually what started my journey into firearms. Um, so I, um, then I got my first pistol, which was a shadow, just a CZ shadow one. And um, when I went to the range to try that pistol, I actually went um, with, I didn't know what pistol I was going to buy. So I went and I tested out a bunch of them. And I actually went for a SIG, a CPP226 is what I wanted to buy. But once I felt the CZ, I was just like, <laughs> this is the one that I want. Like I fell in love with it. Um, so then, um, I was able to buy the pistol. I had my, my pal, uh, my R pal and legally I could buy it, but I just, I wanted some more education behind, um, behind myself. So when I went to the range, I really knew how to work my pistol. Um, so that's why I took my black badge. I didn't know what IPSC was. I had no desire to compete. Um, I am kind of a competitive person normally, like naturally, um, but I'm not a sporty person. <laughs> like, if you see me swing a bat or throw a ball, you would, you would be entertained for a while. Um, so um, I 
I um, I did take my black badge just to get a little bit more experience. Um, so then, of course, Dave, he took his black badge with me so I wouldn't be taking it by myself. And um, we were like, OK, well, let's just shoot one match just so that way we could uh, get our certificate and be have our black badge. And so we shot our one um, IPSC match, and that was in 2016. And well, the rest is history. So it's super addictive. I really enjoy IPSC. I enjoy the sports. I enjoy firearms. I enjoy the community. So for me, the community has been so welcoming. It's been like no matter if I go to an IPSC match or just go to a range, my home range or any range, everybody's they're so they're willing to help you. They're willing to even take advice from me as a as a lady. <laughs> like I just it's interesting when you go to the range as a lady and um, sometimes it's like, oh, well, do you need help? I'm like, no, no, I'm good. But it's like everybody's like they're just yeah, they're welcoming. So I. Let, let me ask you, I was just say, let me ask you about that then, Amanda, um, because I think as ladies, as women in the shooting sports, we've all had the opportunity to help and we've always been offered a little bit of help by the helpful men <laughs> out there at the gun ranges. So, um, so what peanut do you, what, the peanut gallery, yes. And so, <laughs> uh, so what do you think are the, the advantages of being uh, a woman uh, in the shooting sports? Um, I get all of everybody's tips and tricks. So you go, men will go down there, like my spouse will go down there and nobody wants to help him. Like he already knows what he's doing. Like uh, nobody, not nobody wants to help him, but the the help or the advice isn't um, as, as easily provided or offered. Um, being a lady in the sport, it's like, oh, well, do you need help with your stance or do you need help with your grip or do you need help sighting that in? Like, I'm a pistol shooter. I'm not a rifle shooter. So when I took my rifle down and I'm like, I, I can't figure out these <laughs> buttons or I can't figure any of that out. There was a gentleman down there that was like, let me help you. And I'm like, OK, but if I was a dude, I'm not so sure he would have been like, right. let me help you. Maybe he would because the firearm community is great, but being a woman i think it's it's easier to get that assistance. more access that's yeah. amazing so okay so let me flip it to the other side then amanda so what is it about the dudes the peanut gallery uh that tell us a story something that uh that was kind of funny perhaps you have that you want to share with us so um i actually have a couple that i'll share so i went down to the range um with my spouse and a gentleman that he works with and this guy has never had a pistol in his hand um but he was just like okay well let's all go down and so we go down we load up some mags and then my spouse hands him the pistol and hands him a loaded mag and he's like here you go and the guy looks at it and he's like uh uh I'm like do you want me to show you how to shoot that and he's just like yeah so I'm actually not the person that will just go and give somebody a firearm man woman or whatever I am like let me show you how to use that and then I'll give you the magazine um so he was like totally willing to do it whereas my boyfriend's like oh yeah like oh you here's a firearm here's a mag you to go shoot yeah. it and I'm like oh yeah yeah, there, no. there, there seems to be a an assumption uh, that most men know how to shoot, and uh, that is not in fact the case. And for all of you ladies yeah. who are competent and confident shooters, I'm sure there's lots of times when you've had that oh moment because you see something happening that perhaps shouldn't be. So, um, but uh, so Amanda, you got into IPSC by taking your black badge, and you got into competing because you ended up finding that you liked the feeling and, and liked participating. So what, what are you doing for practice and how are you becoming, you know, as badass as you are? Because if everybody <laughs> isn't aware that's on this call, you've got a significant amount of hardware already since starting in 2016. 
Um, I will be honest. So my um, first couple of years, I was dry firing and I was live firing a ton, like a lot, a lot, a lot, because um, like I said, I'm not a really sporty person. So this isn't natural talent. It's um, It was a lot of hard work and it was a lot of time that I put into it. Um, last winter, I bought a, uh, a new home, which was a project. Um, to say the least. So the past year, I have not had any um, practice. I've been to the range twice to practice. So um, with, but before that, it was a lot of dry fire and a lot of live fire. Um, so it's just practice and repetition. I take courses. So I've taken um, courses from the Canadian champion. I've taken co a course from the world champion. Um, I've taken, I've taken actually a few courses. So, um, I courses, love learning. Course, yeah. Courses are others. so important. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm going to jump in, uh, one of our, I think it was Taz, uh, from Red Deer. She, uh, she asked, uh, what is the black badge? So for our, so for those of us that have taken the black badge, I'm sure we can all explain it as, uh, as a course that not only helps you understand uh, pistol shooting and uh, working the range, but it's all about IPSC and gaming the sport of, uh, of IPSC. So uh, for any of you who've taken the black badge, uh, um, anybody wanna share with, with Taz a little bit about what it is? So it's, it's kind of like a, um, it's a holster course. Um, a lot of ranges will accept the black badge course as the holster certification so that you can carry uh, in their range. Um, but you have to complete it to compete in IPSC. So basically they go over all of the safety rules um, about drawing, um, how to move and shoot safely, um, never breaking the radius. I think that's what it was called um, 180 plane. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, they go through all of that. And then by the end of it, you have to go and actually uh, compete in one IPSC competition to, um, to get your final certification. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Amanda. So somebody asked what IPSC is and Amanda answered it in the chat. So um, IPSC is one of a number of pistol shooting uh, competitions. Uh, they all go by acronyms. So there is IPSC and we do have a very, very healthy Alberta community. Those of you who shoot IPSC, put your hand up. For those of you who are on screen, yeah. Abs oh, sorry. Um, and um, Steel Challenge. One, uh, I shot my first steel challenge with Julie, who uh, beautiful Julie Patterson uh, there, and uh, uh, had a great time. Totally encourage that to be a great starting point for people because you don't need your holster course completed to do a steel challenge. So what a good time that was. There's also IDPA and uh, a couple of other types of uh, sh sports where you can incorporate pistols with other guns, multi-gun and three-gun. Uh, so also cowboy action where you, of course, use the older guns and you give yourself cowboy names and <laughs> they use a bunch of props and it's a lot of fun. Don't forget the cowboy costumes. Don't forget yes, the cowboy, cowboy co costumes. Yes, Julie as well, USPSA, absolutely. So there's, there's lots of uh, that we can do and uh, we can't cover them all but if you guys want to continue hanging out with us on Thursday nights maybe we can get a guest speaker and a, and a woman from each of those sports that wants to share with us her story so uh, all great questions fantastic so uh, we talked a little bit about your uh, practice regime and so you did uh, lots of lots of reps downrange, and uh, and then you've taken lots of courses, and so working with experts. Did you step outside of the IPSC community, or all of your courses been uh, within the IPSC realm? They've Sorry, that all, was for you, Amanda. All, <laughs> they have not been all within the IPSC realm, at, realm actually. Uh, right before I got into 3-Gun, uh, which I suck at, um, but right before I got into that, I did take a rifle course. Um, <laughs> Not that that helped at all, but um, I did take a rifle course. Okay. Um, 
And I also actually, I flew to um, Quebec and practiced with Remington's three gun team one time and got um, training from um, a gentleman there at, at CFB Valcartier. And that was pretty surreal. That was, that was cool. That's that's what I have found, and and uh, I'll ask any of you to chime in. I've taken uh, I've taken uh, different types of courses and workshops that range from tactical uh, move and shoot kind of things to multi gun and uh, and also IPSC. And I find that uh, those fundamentals are critical no matter what uh, what kind of shooting discipline you want to participate in. And so. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm always looking for it. And I found that uh, in Canada, it's really, really hard to find good instructors and good courses. So a uh, little plug for Lady Guns, just uh, so you guys know, coming up in 2021, you're going to see some course content showing up. So we're going to have half day and full day workshops, and then we'll see how it goes from there. But it's all going to be about fundamentals. If uh, people want to get into the different shooting disciplines, uh, we can work with that. But when it comes to the different sports, uh, we will hopefully bring in some experts to talk about how to how to work the game um, a little bit more than um, than oh, I don't know what's going on there, but I don't know if you guys saw that. It's gone now. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, uh, yes, best courses for beginners. It, that's a good question, Taz. And uh, and there are no uh, no real set beginners courses. A lot of ranges in the province uh, operate uh, level one and level two pistol. But the one thing I can say is I have yet to find a uh, a ladies only course. And not everybody needs a ladies only course. But I can tell you, most of the women that I've worked with and I've instructed at least want to start there. So I haven't met many women that want to jump on the line by themselves the first time and, uh, and join a group of men. Uh, I know that there's a bunch of women that I've met and a number of you here that don't give two shits now if there's guys on the line. <laughs> you grab your range bag and off you go. And so, um, so again, uh, shameless plug, that's the point for Lady Guns is that we're going to develop that course content and those workshops and include all of you to make sure that we help elevate and lift uh, women up in uh, learning about firearms and, and doing those workshops and those courses. So, uh, so the ranges, uh, Taz, they have level ones and level twos and uh, they have holsters and the black badge course. Uh, so there are all, uh, they are all, excuse me, good ways to get started and, um, the one thing I, I say about training is that you go in, you take away what works, you throw away what doesn't, and then the next course you add to your toolbox. You keep what works and you throw away what doesn't. And once you start taking enough courses, you find that some instructors contradict other ones. So it comes to what works for you and what you're applying it to. So, uh, so that's my advice, but we are working right now on developing course content. So uh, providing the restrictions are lifted, uh, we'll hopefully see, uh, see you guys out for, uh, for some courses with us too. So anybody else have uh, course recommendations for Taz or, or uh, places that they've had great level one and two in, uh, beginner courses or, or intro level courses? I'd recommend uh, checking out uh, some of the videos from the Tactical Performance Center. They've got uh, some really TPC, good yeah. Yeah, Tactical Performance Center, they do have, there are some good videos out there uh, that really help you with fundamentals and uh, the Tactical Performance Center is good. They're on my list of places to go. It's uh, it's not in Canada. So unfortunately we can't go there right now. <laughs> so, um, so anyway. Um, all right, so moving on to another one of my questions. Uh, so we, you talked about how you got your first gun and you kind of were leaning one way, Amanda, and then you went another way. And it, it sounds like you had the great opportunity to try before you buy. Is mm -hmm. that the case? I think, yeah. I think that women really like that try before you buy option. And we always want it on sale because we can't help ourselves. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, I, I always, it blows my mind when I see a guy go, oh, that's a good gun. Click, add to basket, buy. What? How do you even know, <laughs> right? So, um, so uh, Amanda, uh, what's, what's the first gun you started competing with? 
Um, the shadow one. Shadow one. And now, now what are you shooting? Um, well, then I bought the shadow two. So they're both in nine. And now I've recently bought the CZ tactical sport orange in 40. Uh, so I just uh, did one IPSC match with that in October and um, I bought it secondhand and it, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with it. So it's at the gunsmith. Um, it's, I don't know, it's not feeding or it's not eating or it's not, I don't know what it's not <laughs> doing, but it's not, it's not working. It's not a normal CZ and I don't know anybody else that's ever had a problem with this CZ. Um, so right now I'm using a CZ Tactical Sport Orange and I, oh, I love my CZs and it is so pretty and I got a hairpin trigger on her, like she got a one pound, seven ounce trigger, so uh, less than a pound and a half and oh man. Good for you. Well, it's funny, you, it sounds kind of like uh, the CZ Tax Sport in orange in nine mil. Yes, you do, and you shoot it like a house on fire girlfriend. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I think it's funny because you sounded like a mom. It won't eat and it won't feed. Yeah. <laughs> That's a mom problem. Right? right? That's funny. That's funny. So, uh, so you're leaving the nine mil category, hey? Yeah, so I'm leaving production and heading yeah. to standard. And yeah, Laura's like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm super excited to try it and see what happens. Um, I didn't come in last place with all of my <laughs> with all of my feeding problems, so um, I think that I'll do okay. I have um, I have some great guys that I'm gonna need to catch, but um, I'm gonna catch them. So I'm super excited. Good on you. That's fantastic. Yeah, all, all of that training comes into play when you have to do those uh, emergency reloads and uh, failure to feed and stoppage <laughs> clearances, right? So, it's yeah, so you get really good at the load, right? Yeah, you do get really, really good. And even with a bum gun, she still kicked ass. Of course, of oh, course, thanks, Laura. absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, so I would love to go around the room, so to speak, because we all love our guns, and uh, and everybody uh, everybody's got the gear. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna share. Uh, so I started with pack, and that was the literally cheapest, fastest option out of the box. Get my black badge and uh, shoot my first steel match. So that was it. And then it was like, well, now I need a gun I like and that likes me. So uh, I got into a 1911 and uh, and it wasn't bad, but the problem was that it came from the factory with an extractor that was for a 45 and a nine mil gun. So I had all of those failure to feeds and stoppages. So it was absolutely uh, a mess constantly. So it did teach me all, all of the, the things I needed, but uh, but the good news is I got myself into an STI Trojan and uh, loving it and bigger like butter, like what you were, you were talking about, Amanda. And uh, then uh, for my 50th birthday, I bought myself the Staccato P and I put the Delta Point Pro on it. And now I get to shoot optics. So all in nine mil because I'm cheap that way and I want to keep everything the same. And, uh, and uh, so that's my gun of choice right now. Uh, Irons is the STI Trojan. Optic is the Staccato P sticking with the STI. And uh, now Casey, let's go to you. What are you shooting? Uh, well, I stole my husband's STI as my first official gun. I took my black badge uh, with a borrowed gun because I didn't have one at the time. I can't even remember what gun it was that I borrowed. Um, it was that long ago. Uh, and now I just bought a new Zev from Millbrook while well, they're Black Friday sale. So. Black Friday special. <laughs> so I'm nice. waiting for that one now. Really? Cool. Did you? I'm so excited for you. Oh, Thank I love you. you yeah, I'm so super Zev, excited. Hey? Wow. That's Fancy. amazing. Yeah, and she's going to slap an optic on that and uh, try and kick all our ass too. So there you go. <laughs> all right, who's next? Leanne, what do you shoot? Leanne, you're on mute. All right, maybe she didn't hear me. I will get you off mute. Uh, Laura, how about you? Hey there. Um, so my first gun was actually a CZ Phantom Polymer. Um, I disliked it greatly because it was polymer. <laughs> um, so I <laughs> bought a Shadow One 
which I absolutely love. I like, I love, love, love the CZs as well. Um, I like that thin grip. Um, really love it. Just been shooting for not even a year and maybe next year I might do the shadow two and then maybe look optics ready and then progress from there. But, um, yeah, so shadow one. Right on. Cool. Uh, Emily, how about you? What are you shooting these days? So I started off with um, a Beretta 92 FS because, you know, it was uh, really cool in all those 80s movies. So I had to get one of those. <laughs> but because of that double action trigger, I totally sucked with it. And uh, now my main gun is the CZ, the Shadow One, which I totally love. Um, no optic on it or anything. And then just this past year, because I turned 45, um, I was really cheesy and I bought myself a used uh, Remington 1911 um, R1 enhanced chambered in 45. So I'm using that for IDPA as well. Oh, and... that's the extractor. You see, I have a spare extractor <laughs> for a gun because mine it came with my nine mil. Yeah. But yeah, the trigger on that gun is fantastic. I love it. I just don't love it. I don't shoot it that often because it's kind of expensive right now. Yes. Understood. Understood. Yeah. All right, Julie, what are you shooting? So um, I have uh, the CZ Tactical Sport Orange as well in 9mm, um, and that's been lots of fun. I, I really like the trigger pull on that, um, and I also tried shooting with optics. So um, just this year, I got a SIG 320 X5 Legion. I had to look it up <laughs> <laughs> to make sure, um, and I shoot it with a loophole delta point. So i um, just starting to get used to it, but I really like it. It, it's fun. I love the loophole Delta point myself and uh, yeah, totally recommend it. If you can, if you know anybody, Julie, that can hook us up with that loophole stuff, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. And Julie has been very nice and has been uh, helping us out ROing some of our ladies nights and yes, she has let have, people Julie. try her gun. So it was very, I very have. nice of her. Thanks, Casey. And I have. For, I don't mind sharing. <laughs> for, the, for those of you who don't know why we're laughing, Julie's lovely husband works for a company that sells Leupold products. And so a plug for Korth Group and Leupold Delta Point Pros. Um, all right. So, <laughs> yeah. Tara, tell you got to make sure you tell him I did that, right? So I will. <laughs> Tara, Tara Patton. All right. What are you, you shooting are... these days? Uh, I, I don't have a gun. I know my husband's got a SIG. He had it out just the other day, actually, but I'm new to this. I shot my first gun when I was with the Ahi Outdoor Women's Weekend, and actually it was that weekend I got my pal. So I still need to get my R pal, and I was at the last uh, Lady Gun shooting event, and I was complete rubbish. Like, I was terrible. <laughs> I just Nobody's terrible. rubbish. Everybody has the right to be a beginner. Welcome but, aboard. Know, I know, but what I learned is, Bifocals and shooting a pistol are not a good combination. <laughs> no, no. So no. yeah, I'm like, I was doing this. So I'm like, I can't find yeah. it. Yeah, I can't see nothing. So and actually, it was the next day when I got home and I was er, with my husband and he's like, didn't your optometrist say something that if you got into shooting, he's going to have to give you a different prescription? And I'm like, oh, that's right. So I'm like, add yes. that to the to-do list. Thanks. Right. Well, I uh, I will share with you. See you, Taz. Bye. Um, I will share with you and any of you who have aging eyes, uh, mm -hmm. like perhaps myself, uh, the mm -hmm. iron sight gets blurrier and blurrier. And so uh, I uh, I have heard the phrase, you age yourself out of irons. And uh, and that's when optics get introduced. And so mm -hmm. uh, so that's but, why but, I bought a Zev. There you go. But but in the interim, my optometrist gave me a uh, a contact lens for my dominant eye that was built for the distance between my front iron sights and my eyeball. So actually, that's what the, the focal plane was, is right there. So that was kind of cool, too. It took a little bit to get used to, and I don't recommend driving with those contacts in. But um, but yeah, so dominant eye to my to my iron sights and this eye far so uh, so I have two sets of contacts one for shotgun shooting I can see the moon and uh, one for pistol shooting I can only see my my front sight so anyway all right who else have we got out there that wants to share what gun they're shooting I can't see everybody's face because it's restrictive so who did I miss Leanne I know you were you were uh 
there. You're still there. Yeah, there you are. Uh, we need, you're on mute, my dear. How's there that? That's wonderful. All right. What are you shooting or wanting to shoot these days? I'm shooting whatever you provide at the, sh at the range. <laughs> 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 I've only well, come up once and I don't uh, have a, have a gun at all. And uh, neither does my husband either. So. So you see how how willing we are to share our guns, of course, and, and at, at Lady Guns Ladies Nights, we have uh, two or three guns on every in every lane. So uh, we, we have a selection of, of different toys to try. <laughs> yes, it's our it's our ex, it's our excuse to buy more tools for the tool kit, so to speak. So We're no, uh, I'm using that. I'm going to use that time. for my next gun. <laughs> oh, but yeah. there's a ladies night coming and we really need this. 44 yeah. Magnum revolver. Yeah, well, or on the opposite <laughs> end, there's a reason I bought the Glock 44 and 22 caliber, and it's to help uh, everybody get introduced to pistol shooting. Although my 11-year-old son thinks it's his, but don't tell him, and and uh, we'll just keep it a secret between us girls. So, all right. Anybody else on the call that wants to jump out uh, and say, tell us what they're shooting? Uh Hey, uh, Lisa's here. Um, Lisa, <laughs> there you are. Hey, hey. I'm I'm another uh, Shadow One. Um, I do have a Shadow Two, uh, but Amanda, like you, uh, I I don't know what's wrong with it. Like I had feeding issues. It was jamming up on me, and what? I went back to the Shadow One, and now the Shadow One is in my heart, and I, I don't know if I can shoot with the Shadow Two. <laughs> I I just it, it I don't know. It's just like it, I, it's so. This feels so good in my hand. <laughs> Isn't it lovely? It is. It's wonderful. Isn't it, Laura? <laughs> That's when you know it's yours. That's right. I call it my forever gun, but I keep meeting a new one. <laughs> it's kind of like my boyfriend's, but that's a whole other story, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So anybody else want to share with us their guns? I've got some more questions for Amanda and for the group, but I don't want to miss anybody in case uh, you've got some guns you want to share with us. The chat Excellent. is open if anybody wants to add to it anyways, but yeah, we can. Thank, thank you, Casey. Well, this is, this is a really important question because we've got all types of shooters on this call uh, and and, and new to be shooters. So we'll start with you, Amanda. Uh, what are your recommendations for getting started other than attending a Lady Guns Ladies Night, of course, because that's the easy way to do it. Um, I will go back to the way I started. Either do either go out with a friend that has multiple guns. So that way you can try um, a rifle, you can try a pistol, you can try a shotgun. Um, and you're not limited to like just a 22. Uh, I guess we can't go out with an AR anymore, but um, those for are now. really fun to start uh, for, now, for, now. for now. They're really fun to start on because there's no recoil. They're scary, but then when you shoot them, they're like empowering. Um, but I, I say either go out with somebody who has um, a variety of firearms if possible, or go to a range um, that has a variety and rent them. So that is what I did in order to buy my first pistol. So I, I rented like seven or eight firearms and um, I had somebody show me how to use them all. Um, and then that's how I left with my Shadow One. So just go out with somebody that knows what they're doing and that has options for you. Wonderful. Thank you, Amanda. That's a great recommendation. I, uh, I have, uh, uh, I, think, I think I was six when I first shot and that was a rifle. That was my dad. So I had a great introduction, but really it was 10 years ago. I was invited on a date and uh, it was a shooting date. And the guy was pretty cool and I'm dating him 10 years later, but the benefit <laughs> primarily was that I met Casey and, and that's This is how, our dating story, this right? is, Yeah, we've been <laughs> dating for 10 years. So yeah, no, I went on a date with a guy to go shooting at a shooting range. She was there with the guy she was dating. Her and I met, she married him. I'm still dating the guy and Casey and I've been dating ever since. So that's, <laughs> that's it in a nutshell. But uh but yeah, and that uh, that just spurred on everything. So uh, my shooting story is uh, is really that ten years ago I couldn't believe how amazing it was, how uh, much fun. I love your word, Amanda. Empowered every time I take that explosion and set it free, uh, 
<laughs> it uh, it's pretty cool and it's very empowering. So uh, I I absolutely love it. Does anybody else have recommendations or suggestions or questions about getting started? I like your comment, Lisa. <laughs> it's our cute meat. It's our, yeah, yeah. And you know when we need to get away, Casey and I text each other. Want to meet at the range? Sure. <laughs> so it's pretty just sure like that your was our test when we were running this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want to um, go to the range? Of course. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, just like Amanda's t shirt. If you guys haven't read it, I'm only happy at the range. There you go, girl. That's right. Um, some advice I got that was good is buy the gun that you want right away. Because uh, I, I bought like a lower end gun because I was like, oh, you know, I need to practice. and it, But you don't save any money because you get what there's you pay the gun for. You really want, yeah. And you're going to buy it. You know, buy the one that you want right away. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, absolutely. where were you a year ago, Lisa? <laughs> that was me. So I have, um, I, so I'm a, I'm a member at BTSA or Buffalo Target Shooting uh, Range, so out in Kananaskis. And they, now I was already kind of interested in the whole shooting piece, kind of with my husband. Um, and I think, I can't remember where, whether I, I think I had already bought in my CZ Phantom, but they actually had an Annie Oakley day. Um, there was 20 of us. And honestly, I probably literally got to shoot 30 different guns from rifle to shotgun to like a plethora of handguns. And that was amazing. Um, I, I didn't, I don't think actually anyone actually had a shadow one there, but um yeah, I just, I got to shoot everything from a, a 40, a 22 to a 45, to, which was great. So it was a, a neat experience, feel a little more comfortable. We did like a mini um, three gun experience. So that was super cool too. So yeah, so they were supposed to run it in August, I think of this year, but COVID. Yeah. So they'll probably have it again um, and you sign up. And of course you don't have to be a member of the range to do it. It's 20 bucks, free swag out the like crazy great stuff um, and a great fun day. So, and I'll probably be there to volunteer. So anyway, just a, yeah. That, no, that's fantastic. And that's, that's a good point. There are, uh, there are uh, ladies days that are put on by a number of the gun ranges and they are a very low cost to entry. And it is a great way to try a ton of things. Uh, my, uh, my, points of uh, complaint or issue are usually that there's no women on the line. There's no women ROs. It's a bunch of guys. They're very helpful and very friendly, but I'd love to see that change. Uh, we have uh, we have reached out to all of those ranges so that we can post those range days on our events page. And, uh, and we, will, uh, we will volunteer and we will uh, ask you guys to, as uh, part of the Lady Guns Tribe, to get out and help because you got to see it to be it. And so for a new woman to, uh, to be introduced by another woman, there's so much more confidence there. And uh, Isolde, uh, you have been commenting, just take it off mute and feel free to chat with us. <coughs> Uh, uh, one of our regulars at ladies nights and uh, and we met shooting shotguns not pistols hey uh, yeah I'm actually gonna try video and see if everything explodes sorry for okay being well late. So, sorry for being late I got caught that's up okay up at work let's see no hi. problem there you are hey hi okay so it's working and it's not crashing for now so far we're good um, yeah I so I um, I actually started out shooting. I, I got a birthday gift from my husband. We had a, uh, we had like a trap shooting single lesson and then I didn't get to try it again for, for years. And then, um, I was out at Owl Day with my scout group, which is also run by AHIA. They run a lot of great programs for youth and for all kinds of people. Is uh, everybody males, familiar females. with AHIA? Is everybody familiar with AHIA, the Alberta Hunter Education? All right, carry on. The last time we did this, somebody yeah. thought we were talking about Ikea. So just want to be clear, it's not Ikea, <laughs> it's Ikea. Okay, sorry. Um, so, and so they <laughs> yeah, so they had some flyers up, and, uh, and one of the things that they run is a women's league. They run a youth league. Um, and so I started coming out shooting on Wednesday nights. 
Um, great group of people. Um, and, you know, to your point, Deneen, uh, there is there are a couple of female coaches now, uh, but I do think it's been um, sort of a development cycle to get some female coaches to a level where they feel comfortable coaching. Um, I don't feel there quite yet myself because I've only been at it for about four years. Um, and so everybody's sort of in their own stage of development. But uh, I do think um, I do think to get women coaches out there that we need to invest in ourselves to develop ourselves so that we can make that next step. But I will say that their coaches, male and female, are fantastic, low pressure environment. And I've uh, I've really, really enjoyed that program. And uh I, I plan to continue doing trap shooting, and I've really enjoyed coming out to um, the ladies' nights uh, as well with Lady Guns, um, and it's an opportunity to try a different type, style of shooting. Uh, I'm still very, very new to pistol shooting, and so, uh, I mean, it took me, I guess, uh, two years before I could choose out a shotgun to buy, <laughs> so I imagine it's going to take me some time trying different things before I decide if I want to commit to pistol or if I want to do something else. But the journey is uh, the fun part. And, uh, and I, I really appreciate that you guys put on these events. Oh, you're welcome. We appreciate your support. Uh, uh, we met at AHIA at the ladies night, uh, ladies trap night and, uh, and then uh, had uh, from there. So thanks to coming to the dark side and joining us on the pistol side as well, Isol. But uh, yeah, you'll find that your gun locker is not big enough soon enough because we all had to buy a second one or that would in, be Casey's case, in Casey's case, she just had to reinforce an entire room. But that's that's a whole other story. So uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's great having women empowering women and uh, and that's uh, what Lady Guns is all about. And uh, as we all continue down this journey and uh, help each other and elevate each other, we're gonna have uh, a whole bunch of great women shooters. And those of us that are women uh, that, are, that are mothers, uh, hopefully we're bringing our kids into it now. Amanda, you've got a son that you've got into competitive shooting already, I think. And uh, I have no idea how you did that, but I need some tips because I need mine off the video games and into Ipsic or something. Um, how did I do that? So um, they've both been interested in firearms since they were quite young, uh, longer than me, actually. Uh, my youngest is into the rifles, so I'll sit him down with his 22 rifle and a bucket of 22s and he can I he, I just let him go um, but my oldest was really interested in the pistol um, so for his 11th birthday he asked for his black badge so that's what I did I uh, got him his black badge for his uh, 11th birthday and he's now 13 so he's been competing with me for two years um, and he actually competes with my shadow one that's his um, competitive his, not likely, but um, can that's his um, competitive pistol. So he does well, like he, he does pretty good. He really enjoys it. And um, for a 13 year old boy, um, he finds it really hard to fit in in school. Um, and he doesn't wanna be involved in the bad crowd, but he's not really a bookworm either. So the Ipsic community has been super welcoming. He told me that he feels like he's at home and he feels uh, right like he just feels part of the family and like he just he loves the people so it was actually really easy so uh, th the tip is um tell him it's a present and um, get him <laughs> out there to uh, um get his black badge and then like you will create a monster that's amazing. I uh, I have this great video of uh, of my son learning how to do a draw and a mag change. We were just doing dry fire dry fire exercises in the basement, but he uh, he really got it, and uh, he's pretty proud to show it. So we kind of have to, uh, yeah, we we're, we're getting there. He he kind of likes rifles better though. I think he he leans towards the, the long range a little bit more, but. Uh, We'll see what happens. And for those of you who are interested in rifles and long range, we've got some 
great women in the long range community and hopefully uh, as the lady guns virtual ladies night uh, continue we will have uh, have the opportunity to chat with some women that are long range specialists so uh, anybody else have kids they've gotten into shooting casey i wish we could show the video of its shooting time casey's oh, got yeah. the best video of miss kenzie so you're gonna have to put it on the on the website or something so yeah, her we are. Her little. We're, we're, we're rebuilding the website. We're going to be relaunching a bunch of stuff in the new year. So that's going to be exciting for Lady Guns. Um, I don't know. Do you want to go into what we're kind of planning or do you want to? Um, oh, well, yeah, we sure can. Unless anybody else has got kids stories they want to talk mm -hmm. about getting their kids into shooting. Nobody uh, else. Oh, T Tara, you uh, had a comment about a 17 year old. We would love to get into it. He's autistic. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be amazing. He's like, he was like, can we please just not look at a screen to do anything else? <laughs> amazing. Uh, where are you at, Tara? Uh, I'm in Calgary and I live in the Northwest. I'm in Drayton. So I'm like three and a half hours away. But um, it when the nicer weather comes, I would totally bring some guns down. Um, I would need to get somebody like Laura, hint, hint, um, to also <laughs> <laughs> bring us into like BTSA if you're allowed to have guests there. But I would, I would love to take your autistic son shooting, whatever you want. I can, I have a few. So yeah, very yeah. kind of you, Amanda. I think, I think Casey and I would be happy to volunteer as well. And I, and I understand that from the autistic community an indoor range is too loud. So I think, uh, un unless told otherwise, we would require an outdoor range and, uh, we can pull off, uh, the, the CDTSA and the, B and the BTSA as well. So, uh, I think, I think Tara, we can get your son out shooting at least for a good go and see what he thinks. Yeah. We do yeah. pretty good when he was he was much more sound sensitive when he was a little, and I would in loud situations. I'm like, this is life. You have to get used to it. You have to learn. You have to find your way of coping. So actually, just the other day, I had the miter saw out and I made him do the cuts. So oh, actually, good. I grabbed my husband's shooting. Um, Ear protection, the ones that the electronic ones that have the volume yeah. control and all that fun stuff. And I'm like, here, put these on. And he's like, this is amazing. And he just like, like doing his thing. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, and that's loud, right? So I'm like, okay, this is good. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about. I'd be willing to try the inside, but you know, I don't know. Maybe take, get my husband to take him, or we'll all go, or whatever. Well, well I've. I think you have a group of women that would be more than happy to help. So you just mm -hmm. reach out, Tara, no problem at all. He's old, you, your 16 year old comes out as a, as a reward for homework well done. I like that, shooting is a reward. That's how to do it. That's fantastic. Yeah, actually, um, like he'll, he'll have it all done. It's like, and actually it, it's not even just the, having the homework done, it's I'm not, going to chase you down you need to be at the door eat have food eaten have your snacks packed and be ready to go for 4 45 when i'm out the door and i am not going to come get you and there he is all packed up ready to go with his snacks and his water bottle let's go <laughs> amazing amazing that's fantastic i love to hear that so it's uh it's it's trickling down and you know i think not to get into uh what's going on in the gun community in canada and our restrictions right now but uh but the face of the shooting community is largely male it's largely either the gentleman that uh, i refer to affectionately as uncle buck and he's usually wearing camouflage and plaid at the same time and uh he's uh you know chasing an animal of some description and so uh, the other guy that I'm, uh, I'm used to seeing is, uh, you know, that tactical fella that's got uh, sleeve tattoos and he's wearing something with molly webbing. And, uh, well, that's a different kind of guy, right? So what we aren't seeing is the face of women in the shooting community. And we're not seeing um, how influential women can be. And I think it's really important to... Uh, to be leaders in that area and uh, and to make sure that all of our 
kids and our spouses know that this actually is quite normal and it's fun and it's safe and all of that. So, um, so yeah, I, I think that uh, it's easy to get to, to get kids out when women are leading it. I think it's a bit harder when dads are because moms don't let them. So uh, something to ponder. But anyway, I agree, Tara. The woman, the world needs to see diversity. Absolutely. So um, anybody else want to share uh, stories about kids? Well, uh, my daughter, 17, she's like 95 pounds soaking wet, so very tiny. She actually just went out with her dad hunting last week. She didn't do any shooting, but uh, they did get a moose. So we've got two moose antlers in her bedroom right now. So oh, she thoroughly enjoyed it. But yeah, so I'm, I'll probably bring her out. Uh, I want to wait till she's 18. So and she's 18 in January. So. I'll probably bring her out to an event when it gets back to that. Right. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. Well, that's actually a great segue before I forget. Um, for any of you who might know who Lisa Roper is, she's an Alberta leader in the outdoor uh, pursuits. She's a sponsored uh, uh, outdoor enthusiast with uh, hunting and fishing. She's sponsored by Cabela's and Bass Pro and Tracker and all sorts of things. She's going to be our guest, uh, our special guest in two weeks. And for those of you that are part of the hunting community or interested in becoming a hunter or checking it out, uh, in two weeks, our Lady Guns Night is going to be about hunting. We just ended our rifle season for the most part with hunting. There's a few late season draws, but uh, for anybody interested, uh, join us on Thursday, December 17th. And uh, we're going to talk, we're going to share hunting stories and uh, and talk about uh talk about that. So I see we're at the top of the hour. And uh, of course, like I was expecting, we didn't get through half the questions I have for you, Amanda. But um, uh, with with us leading into the uh, Christmas season, I think it's really important to to know what your favorite Christmas food and drink are. So how about we go there? What What are you going to do for Christmas that's COVID friendly? And what are your favorite food and drinks for Christmas? Um, I don't know. That is so, so we can, tough. We can talk I, about guns, but we can't talk about food. I, I can give you a list of guns that I love, but yeah. like, you know, I, I like, I like the whole like turkey making, like I like that traditional turkey making. I also, um, I do a ton of Christmas baking and that's what I give to people for, um, gifts. So I oh, make, cool. I yeah, it is so much fun. I really enjoy it. Is it COVID friendly? Absolutely not. Do I am I concerned about that? No. <laughs> so if you don't want my cookies or my my balls and oh, my balls, then <laughs> blooper. <laughs> blooper. Yeah, can we scrub that? Um, yeah, so if you don't want them, then I'll eat them. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm super excited to do it again this year. So cool. yeah, chocolate, turkey. Chocolate and turkey and red wine. Good coffee. <laughs> Absolutely. Coffee and Baileys. That's my <laughs> <Coffee> thing. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Casey, what's what's yours? Share with us your favorite Christmas food and drink. And what are you guys going to do for Christmas that's COVID friendly? Uh, well, um, favorite food is probably pheasant. Um, Good thing you've got was, a Springer Spaniel. <laughs> yeah, who decided to chase a deer the other day and got 14 stitches pheasant. for it. So, uh, yeah, he's, um, he's also 15, still going strong. So can be happy about that one. Um, <laughs> But yes, pheasant. I grew up on pheasant. We never had turkey for Thanksgiving or um, Christmas. Um, I am a beer drinker and typically don't stray very far from that, though I like to try all the different kinds. Um, and what are we doing? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be getting home from Kamloops and rushing to push, uh, put the tree up and wrapping presents and then I don't know. We'll probably do something with you. <laughs> no, yeah, we'll go shooting or something like that. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Well, um, I uh, I know that we've run out of time because we promised everybody we would be done at seven.
Kevin. I do have so many more questions for Amanda, and I really am enjoying the conversation. Uh, but uh, in the interest of time, I think we should wrap it up. Now everybody's posting uh, liquor recommendations for Christmas. I love it. I love it. Um, so for all of you that have joined us, thank you so, so very much. Amanda, anything you'd like to say before I close off tonight? Uh, thank you for having me. Um, being called a special guest was um, uh, surreal. Like, I'm not so sure how <laughs> special I am. Um, I'm just a girl that likes to shoot her guns. So um, thank you, everybody, for listening to my story and uh, for having me here. Um, I look forward to meeting you guys on the range. And um, definitely let me know when you have um these uh in-person lady nights because i'll definitely come in ro and help and bring guns and um <laughs> <laughs> alcohol after um so yeah just uh thank you so much for having me it was it was great to ch chat with all of you ladies uh oh, thank you amanda it was it was our pleasure and uh and it was kind of cool to try this out because of course we hadn't done it before this is the first one and I'm really, really hoping that uh, you guys will stick with us and we can do this every uh, every two weeks. And uh, when we do get back to shooting, I'd like to keep this going because there are people in other provinces, in other countries that have become amazing friends from the shooting community. And I know that they would love to share their stories with us as well. So uh, like I said, in two weeks, we're gonna, we're gonna have Lisa Roper with us and I hope you can join us. And uh, we'll talk about some recipes uh, from, uh, from hunting perhaps, and maybe the good uh, beverages and accoutrement that go with that from the liquor store. Um, so uh, as Casey said, we've got some big plans for uh, 2021. We're launching a new website. Uh, we know it's hard for women to find things for women uh, in the shooting industry. So we're gonna do a marketplace. We're gonna do a mentor program where you can recommend each other and find each other. Uh, we're gonna have our ladies events. We're gonna have workshops and we're gonna put some educational programming together uh, that covers kind of this whole space. And as you become part of our Lady Guns tribe and you bring ideas to us, we will incorporate that uh, because it's not about us. It's and it's about all of us lifting each other up to become better shooters and really a stronger voice for the shooting community. So I really, really, really want to thank you guys for your time tonight. And uh, uh, in closing, I, I hope to see you out on the range, as Amanda said, and uh, hopefully one day we can all lift a glass together and, uh, and become uh, shooting, shooting friends in the Lady Against Tribe. So thanks, ladies. <laughs> we'll see you soon.